What's going on? It's your boy Richard Hawthorne, aka the Ant Core Strong. So here's a video of um, 15 QA questions that I did on Instagram. Uh, please watch. Hope you enjoy. If you do like it, hit like. And also, if you have a question for me, drop a question down below and I'm going to get to it as soon as possible. Just know your boy don't spit rhymes, he don't spit bars. I spit nuggets. Good morning, good morning. So, time for the first question. The question was, um, out of the two, is deadlift or squat uh, more beneficial uh, for overall strength? And when you look at it, you break it down. Both of them are compound movements. Um, and uh, they both work on the core, okay? The core, you, you, that's where you get your overall strength, maintaining, maintaining weight. So with the two, squat, the bar splitting the body, so therefore you have more of an advantage. Your, your source of energy is directly underneath the bar. So um, uh, directly underneath the bar. So with deadlift, the bar is out front, so you have to create your balance but it's more of out front. So with that being said, with it more out front and you having to find your balance, deadlift will be more beneficial for overall strength. All right, later. Good morning, good morning, my peoples, my peeps. So it's time for the next question. Uh, the question was, what are the best accessory work, in my opinion, for squats and deadlifts? So for squats, I would say front squats. Uh, it allows you to maintain your position. It really focuses on that, that core. And um, also the weight is a little bit different on you. So it's in the front instead of the back. Slight difference. Um, so that's huge. And it allows you to get down in depth pretty good. So I like two for deadlift, uh, like deficits, which works on the bottom. Um, and then I like negatives, which I don't recommend for most because deadlift already is challenging and, and a lot of people can't do it correctly. But if you notice, all these exercises is based around maintaining weight. That's where we get our strength is maintaining weight, being able to control the weight. So that's your answer. And I'll see y'all guys. morning, dark and early. So um, you see it, the boy's clean, got it all cleaned up but the next question is actually from one of my members um holly her and her husband just joined uh, not too long ago and her question was how often do i stretch and mobilize um to be honest right now at the moment i kind of fell off of everything as far as um stretching lifting and um things of that sort i've been shifting my focus and plus i've been having a very busy schedule with training people so um, to be honest, I try to do yoga at least three times a week when I am on everything. Um, I am human, uh, so I'm not perfect. Um, but yoga usually does it for me, uh, keep me in line, keep me all stretched out and working properly. So uh, yeah, definitely three times a week if I can, more. So that's the answer. Is Later. that time. Next question. Is there any tip that I wish I could have had before my first competition? And I would say no. Uh, the reason why is because it's a lot of social, it's, it's social media now and it's a lot of information out there that we try to take from thing to thing and we uh, compromise our own experience, our own journey. So and when you do that, you can't progress. You can't learn yourself. You're living through other people. The reason why I give information now is because I have that change and that opportunity. If I was to give anybody advice i would tell them this to do your, walk your own road have your own experience and then you will be great at that um and i know it's contradicting because i'm giving information and saying not to uh take from other people but this is what it helped most hey there question number five what's the best rep range for power lift 10. like that huh that's my inner roster my inner Rasta mind. <laughs> What's the best rep range for powerlifting? Uh, me personally, I would say all. And when I say all, I mean within a month, okay? Um, I like 10 tens all the way down to uh, three threes um, because I get everything. Um, who's to say um, 
one rep range is best for powerlifting. I think that would be ignorant to believe and uh, putting yourself uh, one dimensional in a sport. Why would you do that? So, like I said, if you want the strength, if you want the conditioning, be able to maintain your position and be able to drive through your heavy weight, you have to have a wide rep range within a month to fill everything. So that's my belief. And uh, what's going on, guys? So question number six, what do I do to build my grip strength? OK, so you're going to hear me say this time and time again. Um, the thing that makes us stronger and gives us more mass is maintaining weight. It's not the actual reps. So it's no sp specific hook grip or alternate grip or anything like that that, that uh, make my grip stronger. It's just maintaining the grip throughout the reps. And if you're only doing ones that singles or, or triples or doubles, then your grip is not going to get any stronger. Uh, yeah, it will, but not, not, any, not, not any significant strength. But here's the thing. Most people have problems with uh, grip strength because they're not holding the bar correctly. When you have a regular bar, most people are trying to get a full grip. Most people think the more ball I grab, the stronger my grip is, and that is not the case. So reevaluate how you're holding the grip and what's going on guys? Question number seven. All right, if I was just starting off, would I train for volume or train for weight to better my total, okay? Um, the thought process is why would I be worried about my total? Why are we worrying about that absolute number? We're just starting. We don't even know the movements yet. Just because we do these natural movements, these compound movements on a day-to-day -day basis, like just sitting down, squatting down and standing back up or leaning over, picking something up, doesn't mean that we know the movements, especially with, with an inanimate object, okay? So if you want to get better, okay, you first have to um, you first have to learn these movements and you can only learn these movements through repetition okay the more reps you have the better and more understanding that you have on these movements so you build your conditioning you build your 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 technique and form and things of that nature but you cannot do it with added weight what's going on guys so question number eight what do I enjoy doing outside of powerlifting First and foremost, spending time with my daughter, friends and family, you can't get enough of that time. Um, I do enjoy going out when I do get to go out. Uh, you know, I always do what I do, but uh, I like to stay active, play flag football, tackle football, pick up basketball. Um, the more active I am, the stronger I am in the gym. Um, I love to pick apart movements, leverages, uh, energy flow, figure out how the body works if you haven't noticed that already. Um, and I, I like to find out the absolute truths about things by putting genres together, science, math, philosophies, um, do all those things and ask questions to get the truth out of, you know, what's really going on, seeing the real perspective about everything. So that's pretty much what I do. What's going on? So question number nine, what's my thoughts on using bands for the main movements? Um, for those who don't know what bands are, uh, it's, it's bands that you put on the end of the bars while you have weight on there to either help with the lift or give more resistance. And here's how I look at it. It's nothing new underneath the sun. Why use something else when you can create that with your own body by maintaining weight in a smooth movement going from up to down and from down to up. Um, a lot of times it pulls you out of your groove so therefore if you're doing reps and it's pulling you out of your groove then therefore you're training bad mechanics bad movements so um, that's my thoughts like I said it's nothing new underneath the Sun created on your own so you can make your lifts better uh, it's always better to do it the right way not saying the bands are wrong they do have its perks What's going on guys question number 10 why haven't I competed in IPF so back it up a little bit age 18 right out of high school I was pretty damn good name was getting big and all that good stuff and I loved to compete um, and when I say compete I wanted to lift where it was a challenge um, I wanted to be hard so then 
non-drug tested was where I got my competition. Um, but I had this complex to where I wanted people to understand that I was drug free. So I would bounce back and forth from drug tested to non-drug tested. The thing with IPF, they, they want to dictate where you can lift. Um, and I, I didn't like that because um, wherever I had my competition, I was going to go. I lifted under every organization under the sun. Um, just I just wanted to lift and compete. That's what made me better. So um, having somebody dictate what I can and can't do, uh, that's, not, that's not me. What's going on? It is Monday and early. Question number 11. What are my thoughts on RDLs? I'm about to start some shit. So, RDLs. All RDLs is nothing more than a deadlift starting in a different position. What does that sound like? Rack outs, lock outs, however you want to call them, whatever you want to call them. So, this is what happens, okay? Most people mess up their deadlift because they think of the deadlift or rack outs as a hinge movement trying to trying to make that lower back stronger or the posterior chain stronger, okay? But all we need to do when we're doing RDLs or deadlifts is stand straight up by pushing feet, your feet into the ground where your knees and your ball and socket, not the hip, locks out automatically. But what happens when you hinge with the rack out or deadlifts, you're overdeveloping that lower back, the glutes, okay, and the hamstrings or that posterior chain and underutilizing those hip flexors. What's going on guys? Time for question number 12. All right, how do I fix a hitching problem um, at the top of my deadlift? For those who don't know what a de uh, hitch is in the deadlift, is when you're lifting, okay, and the knees protrude forward and you're trying to ramp that bar slowly up your legs, okay? For all issues on deadlift, it can be resolved mostly from the beginning of the deadlift. Um, being in the right position, a totally flat foot, not pushing off the heels and not pushing off the toes. Um, where the bar is midfoot, okay, scapula is over the bar, and um, you're pushing directly into the ground, being able to maintain your positioning with the bar, okay? Um, now, when you're pulling and that bar touches your thighs at the low part, part of your thighs, that's going to result into a hitch most of the time when it comes to heavier weight. Okay, so stay away from that. Keep the ball away from your body. Good morning, good morning. Question number 13. What is the best way to build your core? Okay, um, I believe a lot of people have to change their perspective of what the core is. The core is not the abs and obliques. Um, the core is the, 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 the part of your body that connects everything together. And when you think about it like that, um, you have to do things that allow the body to work as a unit. We're too busy trying to separate or um, split up body parts, okay? So the thing is, is um, when you do fully functional movements like uh, carrying a yoke, farmer's walks, squats, deadlifts, rows, anything where you have to maintain position while doing the actual function, that's what's going to build your core, maintaining weight. So. Um, that's your best bet, and that's what's going to actually make you actually make you stronger uh, overall. Later. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, question number fourteen: How do I increase my bench? Um, that's a little bit on the broad uh, question um, side. So, um, I'm gonna say this just to talk about the actual movement um, when we are benching. Um, you always want to keep pressure on the bar or allow yourself to feel the force of the weight at all times okay any kind of explosion at the top when you're doing your reps or coming down and relaxing before you touch or bouncing um, off the chest you no longer feel the pressure of the weight therefore you cannot get the conditioning to maintain weight so the more you maintain weight once again that I like to say the stronger you become so keep the movement smooth okay at all times control later good morning good morning so it is uh, that time uh, for question number 15 and question number 15 is um, what is my mental approach going into a meet? Um, I'm carefree. I'm not worrying about any outside element, people, or whatever. 
Um, I'm not worried about who's going to show up, who I'm competing against. I'm not worried about the judges. I'm not worried about the conditions. I'm just putting myself in a place to where I can envision my outcome, envision me actually, Ooh. how you doing? Actually uh, complete, com completing my lifts. Um, when you start worrying about any outside um, uh, elements, that's when you start to con try to control things, um, control um, how you lift and and control what people think of you or perceive of you when you lift. Um, always try to stay calm, cool, and collected. That's when good things happen.